and the reality is it's um, it's not up for it's not up for discussion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but in reality, it isn't for for a number of reasons. I mean, one, Ireland has always had a low corporate tax strategy now, Go, going way back. And we talk a bit about the history, if you like, in a minute. But uh, put it in context. But equally, um, um, it's uh, you know copper fastened in to a lot of the um, you know to the EU treaties and into the Lisbon Treaty and so forth. Uh, that it's it's there. It's signed up to as uh, as part of Ireland's economic program by by all the other EU countries in in that respect. If it if it's to be changed, uh, then it has to be unanimous, and um, so you know that's that that's copper fastened in there. But the reality as well is that uh, you know with all that's going on in in this country at the moment, the one uh, you know the one piece as I said a few minutes ago that's still robust and strong are the fundamentals for uh, corporate investment here, either by multinational companies or, or existing Irish companies to whom the tax rate applies, and um, uh, you know that is one of the kind of clear drivers of uh, economic growth here. Exports are growing. Uh, you know the balance of payments is is very positive. So you know there's a lot of the normal economic measures that that are are, are in the right direction for Ireland, and they are underpinned by uh, the uh, corporate investment, and the tax rate is is part of that. And uh, I can't understand why you know anyone would uh, interfere with the one thing that's actually working to bring the economy back out right now, as as opposed to anything else. So I think the tax rate is, um, uh, in, in our view, uh, fundamental, committed to, uh, 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 secure and, and, and a really important part of the government economic strategy uh, to take us forward out of this. So, uh, well, I was I on the phone with a friend in yeah. San Francisco last, yeah. the night before yeah. last, and he asked me if you could see it. And I said, no, it's, it's just like San Francisco. California yeah. is under yeah. terrible financial yeah. problems. Yeah. But if you go out mm -hmm. in San Francisco, the bars are full, the restaurants are full, the cars are on the road, everyone yeah. gets up and goes to work in the morning, and yeah. it's the same yeah. here. Yeah. I mean, there's no panic here on no. the streets. No. 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 <laughs> but certainly, you know, in the, in the British yeah. newspapers, it's, it's all panic. Like, I mean, yeah. we're finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but IDA has been um, uh, around um, for 40 years now. Uh, it was uh, founded uh, back in, in, in 1969. Um, it's the Irish Government uh, Foreign Direct Investment Agency. So basically, we um, uh, facilitate um, investment by um, uh, multinational or foreign companies in, into Ireland. And it's maybe a little bit interesting, and it, it comes back to the tax thing a, a little bit, and put it in its kind of economic history context. If you look back at the, at the late 1960s, that was a time when Ireland was kind of opening up its, its kind of economic development. We were coming out of a kind of a period of, of protectionism, I guess, and we were uh, preparing uh, really at that stage, I guess, to join what was then uh, the EEC, now the EU. Uh, so we were beginning to look a little bit differently to open up the, the economy to uh, investment and indeed obviously to competition as well, so there was two sides to it. But one of the, or a couple of the key economic policies and strategies that were put in place in the late 60s leading up to that uh, are still fundamental. Uh, one of those was the investment that Ireland has uh, started to put in then and continues to put into the education system uh, to produce people for uh, the uh, industrial investment. Uh, and, and that was one of the big things done in the late 60s was to make uh, primary education free for everybody in, in the country. That was the kind of start of that commitment to developing the education system. That's still fundamental reason why, why, why companies are still coming here. The second piece that was put in place at that time was the um, uh, corporate tax regime. Uh, and it's changed a little bit over the years, but the fundamental commitment at that point in time was uh, a low corporate tax regime. Uh, that was put in place at that time, and that's that's still an underpinning of, of what goes on. So you know, in the so the organisation was set up to uh, work with uh, both multinational companies and uh, domestic industry at the, at at the time. Um, you know, throughout the sixties, uh, or through the late sixties, and then in, into the seventies, I guess much of that investment came from companies uh, from a manufacturing point of view, had manufacturing activities closer to the market and closer to the European market and, and, and so forth. So much of the investment that came that time was in manufacturing, 
in, in a couple of big sectors, in um, the IT sector, what is now known as the IT sector. We used to call it the electronics industry back then. <laughs> it's now, now the, the IT sector, I guess. And also in, in life sciences, in, in pharmaceuticals um, and, and, and healthcare products. Um, those were the kind of two big industries at the time. There was also other, other industries in terms of automotive and uh, consumer products and stuff like that. But it was largely built around production and the productive economy. That foundation is still there. Lots of companies are still manufacturing here, even though we know that kind of the bulk of manufacturing has obviously transitioned eastward. Uh, but there are still, you know, significant levels of high-level manufacturing still carried out, particularly in the life sciences, the biopharma, and the medical technology sector, in addition to the uh, ICT sector. Another interesting thing that developed, because though that was a manufacturing environment at that time, a lot of the, the associated skills and the associated uh, activities around manufacturing, which we, uh, like logistics and stuff like that, which we now know as supply chain management. A lot of skills were developed in Ireland around that at that time. And those are now playing a very important part in lots of activities here. Even companies who are not manufacturing are perhaps running their supply chain management systems from here based on the, the manufacturing experience back then, for example. Then if we take it through you know, the late 70s and, and, and segue into the 80s, some other new, new activities and new, new business models were, were developing new areas of activity. Things like uh, software and software development were emerging as, um, as, as areas, so we um, uh, captured that within the, um, within the, um, um, uh, uh, within the effort. Um, uh, other things like, like call centers were becoming very popular uh, at that time, so we developed a proposition around, around call centers around shared services, companies were rationalizing activities and putting them into shared centralized shared services centers, so we developed a proposition around pan-European shared services centers. And probably the biggest one of all at that time was our development into financial services. And then, as you probably know, the International Financial Services Centre here in Dublin is now one of, the, one, one of the biggest in Europe. So again, that was built around uh, the tax uh, regime, uh, which was adjusted at that time to make it more meaningful to the non-productive industries, as it were. And uh, further investment into the education system to produce the people needed for those industries. That was the time that led to the creation of what are now known as institutes of technology around the country. There's, you know, 14 or 15 of them or something like that. So that came from around that time. And that was... That period produced, um, uh, you know, some of the key things that are still relevant to Ireland. We, we, we talk about Ireland's value proposition as, as, as four T's. The first two T's in that are talent, which is people availability, and the second one is tax. So those two were put in place way back when, and they are still there and, 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 st and still important. And then you go through the, um, you know, the 80s and, in, and into the early 90s, when those particular activities of shared services, software development, manufacturing, were being evolved into higher value activities that companies kept um, uh, reinvesting in here. And we built up a critical mass at that stage of uh, both foreign and Irish-owned companies operating in those sectors in the country. So we now had, had, had critical mass in that and we had built up a track record of companies investing in Ireland and a reputation, uh, uh, Ireland's reputation as a place for uh, investment and serving uh, the European market and being close with the customers. And that gave us our, our, our third T in the, in the 40s, which is, is, is the track record. So companies looking at Ireland or kind of looking at their, their competitors, their, their, their partners, their peers, uh, other companies in the industry investing here and so if they were coming to look at Ireland as a location they knew they weren't breaking new ground it was you know it had been done before and these companies had done it successfully the other part of that track record which continues in into today as well is that the companies that are here um, particularly said the farm companies are here which is about a thousand give or take at, at any point in time now most of those continue to reinvest here. So most, a lot of the work that we do with our client companies is actually with the companies that are already here 
uh, there is always you know uh, um, uh, the the effort towards bringing in new business. But equally important, and if not even more important, is working with the companies that are here. And those companies are not leaving the country right now, and they are continuing to reinvest. So that track record bit is, is, is clearly um, a big part of, of what people would look at from Ireland as well. Then we go through the next phase into the 90s, um, and, and up to the late 90s, and even, I suppose, into the early noughties, um, um, the, the fourth T uh, began to emerge and that was companies then began to invest in research and development activities here. Uh, the government made significant investments in, in the late 90s and early 2000s in um, enhancing and upgrading, as if, if that's the right way to put it, the investment capability and the investment, in, uh, the, sorry, the research and development capability and the research and development infrastructure in Ireland through an organisation like Science Foundation Ireland, the Higher Education Authority and research and development funds for the enterprise agencies like IDA and our sister agency that works with the domestic industry, uh, Enterprise Ireland. And that has led to, over the last number of years, um, a continual and significant investment by multinational and Irish companies in research and development themselves, but equally in collaboration with the academic groups that have been created through that government uh, funding through Science Foundation Ireland. And that gives us technology. That's the, the, the fourth T in the, um, in, in the process. We're looking for a fifth one. We're not sure what it's, what it's going to be yet. But right now, those are the, um, uh, the, the four Ts when we say, why do people look at Ireland? It's talent, availability. It's tax, yes. It's the track record of, 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 of what has happened here and uh, now the uh, technology and the access to technology and capabilities that are here as well. So that takes us kind of up to today and I'd say, it's, it's probably fair to say that at least half of the investments made by companies in this country right now, particularly the multinational side but also the domestic side, um, uh, half of those investments are related to uh, research and development, uh, product development, process development, and innovation, innovation in general. So that brings us kind of right up to date where the next wave of companies that are, are, are choosing Ireland as their, their European headquarters or sometimes their full international headquarters are the kind of the new companies, the, the Facebooks and the Googles and the LinkedIn's and, you know, companies like that who are now uh, you know, the kind of current wave of, of companies coming in, along with companies investing in the new technologies in terms of uh, developments in cloud and cloud technologies, mm -hmm. uh, sensor technologies, exascale computing, and also into renewable energy and sustainable energy uh, activities and technologies. And that's the next the next kind of phase that, that, that we're um, uh, evolving towards in terms of offering value to companies uh, investing in Ireland as well. So that's the kind of quick potted history of the last 40 years in terms of how, how we've done it and how it, and, and how it has evolved and how it actually all does, does actually fit together. Of course, we're waiting to see the big Irish company that will emerge. Uh, indeed, indeed, but there are some uh, there are some very significant Irish companies that have have emerged over that time that are now international companies in their own right. Um, you think of um, some of them may not be that well known, but for example, uh, Cement Roadstone Holdings is actually one of the biggest you know uh, companies in that um, uh, uh, in that area in in the world. The one in you, Poland now. Yes, yeah. Uh, you take companies like like Smurfit, Smurfit Packaging, and and a whole lot of other stuff that uh, that, that Smurfit does. Uh, that's a big international company now, probably you know bigger outside Ireland than in Ireland. I'm thinking in terms on the web. On the web, okay. Like we a, a yeah. place I could visit yeah, every yeah. day. Yeah, okay. You come like back to I that. Visit yeah, the, the yeah, Facebook, yeah. I visit the yeah. Facebook. Yeah. I visit the Yahoo's. I go to the yeah. LinkedIn. Yeah. The, the Twitters. You know, yeah. The, yeah. And, and, and they're all here. And Irish ones of those, yes, it would be. It would be. Um, wh what there are, they're not really in that space, I suppose, but what has really emerged on the domestic front in terms of uh, technology companies has really been around software. Uh, tremendous software capability here and quite a number of 
you know, uh, Irish companies have evolved into fairly significant software companies, either in their own right or have been kind of merged in with or acquired by, you know, the bigger the bigger companies like the the IBMs or the Cisco's or the Intel's and yeah. so forth. The Intel you know? does software and Shannon. Yes, many of yeah. them were here at the yeah. for the indeed. Yeah. And also in areas like. Um, Again, it's it's kind of it's not on the web as such, but but some it could be like like games companies. Intel bought um, a games company Havoc, uh, which was actually an Irish startup company uh, a number of years ago. Uh, and there's there's also a lot of developments and and, and and companies growing up in that kind of digital media space, I suppose if you could call it, but more in the games piece and getting that out onto the web and so forth. So you know, there's there's activities like that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. And of course, this is Innovation Week. Uh, yes, this is also Innovation <laughs> Week, and I don't know if you've seen. Yeah. Every week, I don't know. Did we, I'm not even sure. We, I don't know if we if we got a poster there, but we have the. Um, uh, one of the, um, uh, because of that technology development and, and, and the encouraging of, of innovation and so forth, we have um, the, the uh, one of our the, the kind of taglines that you will see is is Innovation Ireland. You know, which which brings together that 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 kind of concept of, of 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 creativity and innovation that you can get from from the Irish workforce as well. We had a, a conference on that team actually in um, in Stanford a couple of weeks ago, where we uh, tried to to bring out some of the the kind of. Uh, innovative researchers from Ireland that are working with companies like Intel and, and Cisco and so forth uh, to kind of showcase you know some of that uh, creativity and innovation that's that's actually coming out of Ireland right now. At the time when the monks left the monasteries and went to Europe. And mm -hmm. Indeed, <laughs> spread spread the spread the Irish innovation gospel. Yes, indeed. All right. Well, thanks very much, Pat. Okay, you're very welcome, Paul. Thank you.